People all over the valley and the country dropped what they were doing late this morning and gave themselves a chance to be mesmerized by a rare solar eclipse. Yeah, even though we weren't in the so-called path of totality where the moon completely covered the sun, local sky watchers still got a chance to see a show to remember. News 3 Steve Wolford was at a big watch party at CSN and joins us now in studio with the reviews and the reaction. Hey, did you guys watch? I used the colander trick okay, you told good. us. Okay, good. Yeah, the food colander works. We only saw a, a partial solar eclipse late this morning, about 50%, as opposed to the millions of people in that path of totality that Latoya mentioned. That ran from Texas into the Midwest and Great Lakes. But to the hundreds of people who showed up for a big watch party in CSN, it was still an eclipse to remember. I think it's awesome to see the community gather around and to celebrate something that could be trivial to most. But it's an awesome occurrence that we only get every so often. So rare. It's a school day. We're playing hooky. Shh, don't tell anybody. Davina McKelly says she found out her kids' teachers weren't planning to do anything special for the eclipse. Kind of mad. So I said, no way. They're going to miss out on this. Oh, everybody likes to miss school once in a while. You know, no one likes school, honestly. <laughs> so I got to spend time with my family, watch the solar eclipse together. Viewing techniques ranged from paper glasses with dark lenses to telescopes equipped with extra dark filters to watch the moon slowly create that crescent-shaped silhouette. And unlike the total solar eclipse in 2017 when it rained, it is a night and day difference for me and I am so thrilled that we are having clear skies today. CSN Planetarium Manager Dr. Andrew Carey says today was perfect. We love it here at the Planetarium. Anytime that we have a space event going on and people are interested, it just makes me so happy. I love seeing the kids out here all looking up through their solar glasses. Inside in the Planetarium, a live NASA feed from the path of totality through the nation's midsection where millions saw a total solar eclipse, something that won't happen again in the United States until 2044 which is why Morgan Morrow wanted to spend this eclipse day with her seven-year-old son, Luciano. Yeah, I think it's really special, especially knowing it's not going to be happening again for another, uh, you know, was it 21 years? So it's pretty special to, you know, celebrate this and be out here with him. Do you know how old you're going to be the next time we have a full total solar eclipse? 28. You're going to be all grown up? Mm-hmm. Wow, what's, what's your mom think about that? Uh, Thank you so much for coming. She's a little freaked out. You know, she'll get over it. Okay, and a little solar eclipse uh, for nerds, all right? We can thank German mathematician Johannes Kepler for his laws of planetary motion, which is why scientists can now accurately predict when and where we'll have an eclipse, along with a bunch of other stuff. He figured that out in the early 1600s, just before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock. So there's your timeline. Jim. Wow, and he didn't even have an <laughs> iPhone. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Or Google. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you for all that, Steve.